Hello everyone. Now today we will be discussing about the dengue management. We have previously discussed about the dengue in both in English and Nepali language. Okay. Now we will talk about the dengue management. Look, uh, dengue once diagnosed, a patient when you come to you with a fever, then you have to understand that in present setting in Nepal, there will be a diagnosis of dengue, the first one. Then there will be another outbreak which is going on, known as the scrub typhus. Then there is another thing that we have, we have endemic that is typhoid during rainy season it get aggravated and obviously since the uh, winter season is approaching there will be a outbreak of influenza as well. So this thing you need to be keep in your mind and one major thing important thing is there are other like leptospirosis and uh, chicken gunia there are there are other things as well but you need to understand that dengue will be the first to have your differential diagnosis okay and you also need to understand that uh, since dengue and scrub typhus these are at present going outbreak in our country in nepal then you have to understood that this thrombocytopenia which we are talking about the thrombocyte there will decrease in blood rate count that will be present in scrub typhus as well as in dengue Leukopenia that can be present in, in, in dengue that can be present in scrub typhus. Although in scrub typhus we will find most of the case normal WC count but leukopenia can be present. Thrombocytopenia will be in both as well as liver enzyme elevated will be in both. Although in scrub typhus we will have the scar and other uh, finding we will talk about the scar typhus in subsequent uh, lecture. But talking about dengue just seeing the symptom only you don't need to be confirm about dengue. You have to confirm the diagnosis and I have talked in the previous lecture how to uh, confirm the diagnosis and which uh, from the day of the onset of the fever which on which day you will find NS1 that positive and, and from which day that is about uh, 1 to 7 days say 0 to 3 days only you will find NS1 or RT-PCR positive whereas 3 to 7 days you will find both RT-PCR and the, the IgM antibody will come in 4th or 5th day. Okay, and after seven days, you will not find the viremia, you will not find the NS1, you have to depend on antibody only for your diagnosis. Okay, so once you have established the diagnosis, you have the plan of management because if it is a scrub typhus, if it is a leptospirosis, if it is a uh, typhoid, if it is an uh, influenza, then they need the treatment. Other, otherwise, if you are not getting treatment, then they will die. Even in dengue, if you are not diagnosed, then although the virus cycle completed and patient may not have any further complication and will recover but other diseases will not require by its own they need the treatment so you need to establish the diagnosis okay after establish the diagnosis let us uh, come to the presumptive diagnosis although in endemic reason we have a presumptive like living like we are living in, in the endemic reason or travel to endemic area plus fever if has a fever and two of the followings like nausea vomiting rash aches and pain that is headache eye pain joint pain muscle pain okay these all are these are muscle pain warning sign we'll talk about the warning sign tourniquet test positive i have talked about the tourniquet test that is uh, applying of the bp cuff and uh, between the systole and diastolic for five minutes and if you are uh, below here in the um, one in one inch you will find 10, 10 ptc then it is for tourniquet test positive and it is a it is in dengue then leukopenia if these are the this if we are living in endemic region or anybody have traveled this endemic area we have fever or this any of the two of the six finding then you can say that there is a possibility presenting diagnosis of dengue okay uh, if you, these are present and if there is a warning sign the warning sign what are the warning signs warning signs are severe abdominal pain or tenderness okay then persistent vomiting, mucosal bleed, given in non greater than 2 cm, clinical fluid accumulation, lethargy and restlessness, or increase in hematocrit concern, concrocrit with rapid decrease in blood rate count. You have to look in dengue, there is one major uh, criteria known as the hematocrit level greater than 20%. If you are, if your patient come, okay, you have checked the CBC and your hematocrit level is supposed something, and if there is increase in hematocrit level greater than 20 percent means that fluid is leaked from your capillaries your blood vessel and so hemoglobin concentration is occurring that is a very warning sign that he or she is there is a plasma leakage and they are in in the critical stage okay so these are the warning signs. now you have to decide 
there is only presumptive diagnosis or warning sign is there or not. If there is only presumptive diagnosis but no warning sign, then we categorize that group of people as a group A. Although in this case, you can do the test and confirm the diagnosis. If there is no warning sign, only the presumptive diagnostic sign, then they are categorized as group A. Okay. And that can be mass managed in outpatient management. So you have to manage this patient in outpatient setting. Okay. We'll talk about how we'll manage in our patient. No one, if there is a warning sign, plus this presumptive diagnosis, or you have confirmed the diagnosis with there is a warning sign. If there is a warning sign, then they can be, they have to manage in, in patient. You have to admit that patient. Okay. And after admitted, we can categorize into the two group, group B and group C. Group B, there will be, can be managed in the uh, in patient into the ward. Well, as is group C, if there is a compensatory or non-compensatory shock, according to that, we need to manage in ICU. Okay, so what are the group B people? Warning sign, presumptive diagnosis, confirm you may be warning sign. If you are not confirmed, then also warning sign. The group B patient with warning sign with sign of severe dengue or coexisting condition. If there is a severe dengue or coexisting condition like pregnancy, infancy, diabetes mellitus, poor social situation, old age, and renal failure. These are the concomitant if there is a coexisting this condition and having then dengue with warning sign okay then you have to consider as a serious even this group also if it is not possible to manage in the uh, central icu can ma manage them in the medical icu okay medicine icu that can be done but these people obviously need a present management and a severe concentration okay so this group can be managed here whereas the group c includes the severe plasma leakage with shock and of fluid accumulate with respect to distress the group C people are what? They have actually in the SOC that may be compulsory and non-compulsory. We'll discuss about groups B and group C management in the subsequent lecture. Here we'll only discuss about the outpatient management. Okay, so group C, the severe plasma leakage or SOC, outer fluid acclimation with respiratory distress, or there is a severe bleeding, or there is a severe organ impairment. If you remember in a previous lecture, I have talked that WHO in 1997 they have classified as dengue, dengue with hemorrhagic shock, and dengue C. Dengue shock syndrome or dengue severe dengue. In uh, pre 2007 or in 2009, they have classified as dengue without warning sign, dengue with warning sign, and severe dengue. So, just we need to classify our group and then we can manage accordingly. Okay, now we are where we are, we are presenting diagnosis, no warning sign, group A, outpatient management. What will be the outpatient management? The outpatient management is control of the fever most important thing but you have to remember remember the control of the fever should always be only with the paracetamol you can use other msi like ibuprofen okay then aspirin these are very gastric toxicity they will increase the propensity they will increase the tendency of gi bleed so never use other antipyretics you can use other but not nsid and steroids because use concentrate only in paracetamol do not use ibuprofen do not use aspirin do not use as uh, steroids, these are increase the gastric bleeding, and there is already a tendency of bleeding. And if you are using that, there will be a more chance of bleeding. So be aware of using that. Control the fever with paracetamol or with the tepid sponging. Apply the cold water when there is a high fever. Decrease the temperature by other means than using this ibuprofen and aspirin. Paracetamol four times a day you can use. Okay. Then comes to the prevent dehydration. You know. Check for the dehydration signs, sunken eyes, dry drum, no tears in the crying baby, skin texture, capillary. Check the sign of dehydration. If there is a dehydration, you must address that. Okay. Prevent dehydration. That is important. Pre prevent the spread of the dengue with your within your house. If the patient is infected, now you have to prevent the spread of the dengue. Okay. Apply the need, apply the repent to this uh, to give through the your patient as well as to the household. Okay, you cannot apply the 10% DET only in the two month babies below than that. In above, you can apply. Okay, apply the mosquito nets. These are very necessary. The prevention and other like breed. Uh, we'll talk about the prevention of dengue detail. How can we prevent it? The main thing is application of the mosquito net, the repent, and uh, addressing all the artificial collection of water. Okay. Then coming to the watch for the warning sign, check check for the warning sign and follow up the person, follow up with the CBC. Okay, see that there is a decrease in, look, there will be decrease in blood WC kind, there will be decrease in the blood rate, and once they will be decreasing in decreasing trend, at time after 5, 6, 7 days, 8 days, say, there will be first increase in WC count, and 
then after 24 hours follows the increase in the blood rate count so you have to check also the wbc count is increasing or not once you find that wbc count has started to increase you should be assured that in 24 hour now blood rate is also going to increase okay now coming to so where what we will follow up follow up with the cbc dehydration is there or not decreasing the blood rate count hemocrat level and obviously lft as well okay so because lft there will be decrease in there will be increase in the liver exam and if it is more than 1000 of the ast then that is very severe okay that needs to be even uh, we have seen one case that needs due to the dengue damage of the liver and need liver transplant so that you need to be monitored as well okay now this will be the management of your outpatient and you have to tell educate the patient about the fever since there will be the stage of febrile then comes the critical phase and recovery once the fever phase go educate all your patient that after the fever phase goes you will feel that you are fine but the critical stage arises from 24 to 48 hour and that is a danger stage do follow up the patient in that stage that is very important because that stage is passed patient will have no other complication then everything will get resolved okay now what are the things you don't don't do that you do don't do okay so don't do don't use the corticosteroids okay don't do don't do the, don't use corticosteroid do not, no platelet transfusion because platelet transfusion doesn't decrease the risk of bleeding okay no half normal saline never use as a maintenance fluid also half normal saline you use 0.9 that is isotonic normal saline if it is not improving go for the crystalloid if it is not improving even the transfusion is required if there is a uh, if there is bleeding out hemocrate crack is decreasing so never use this 0.5 percent okay don't assume that IV fluid are necessary always prefer the oral fluids that may increase the plain water that may increase the soup other things other form of the water should be used and no NSID except paracetamol that is very very important so don't use steroid don't no blood rate transmission what can be done if there is a uh, decrease in the um, hematocrat not the platelet if there is a bleeding if there is hematocrat is decreasing then you can transfuse the whole blood or PRPC okay no half line so now give the normal saline 0.9 percent okay if it is not improving then they go to the crystalloid we talked about in group c and group uh, group b and group c management don't assume that i fluid is necessary never think that okay i fluid will be necessary you give the water okay maintain the temperature that is important okay and no nsid except paracetamol these are the don't don't these are don't use or don't do okay we'll talk about the what are the uh, what are the prevention and the management of the group b and group c people in next video thank you